Hello everyone, Madhusudan Raj. Today is 7th September 2013, and a couple of weeks ago, the you know Indian Parliament's both houses passed the Food Security Bill. Lok Sabha passes Food Security Bill. You know it is dubbed as a game changer. The flagship measure of the UPA government will legally entitle 67% of the population, including 75% rural and 50% urban, to get subsidized grains under the flagship, under the targeted public distribution system, the TPDS. A beneficiary will be entitled to 5 kg of rice, wheat, or coarse cereal at rupees 3, rupees 2, and rupees 1 per kilogram per month respectively. Uh, this bill was passed as I said in Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha simultaneously you know, uh, after a few days time. So now only the president has to sign it and once president will sign it this food security bill will become food security law. It's actually not law, it's actually legislation and there is a lot of politics going on on this food security bill. The bill itself is a political step. Obviously it's a political gimmick because the elections are nearby, just a couple of months away, uh, in 2014. So, the present, you know, incumbent, you know, UPA government is very desperate because their performance so far is, you know, pathetic. So that's why, you know, they are just trying to hold on to whatever, you know, they can, you know, find. So they are. That is the reason why they are, you know, they have uh, announced this bill and they have passed this bill in the parliament. And, you know, many people are, you know, saying that, you know, there's a debate going on between, you know, uh, Amartya Sen and Jagdish Bhagwati. You know, both are arguing for different things, but in any case, you know, their, their logic is pretty much, the model is pretty much the status quo. But what people are saying, as I said, that this food security bill is, you know, very important. But, you know, it is totally ridiculous for... You know, you know, somebody who understands what these legislations are, right? It is absolutely ridiculous to think that, you know, just by passing some kind of bill, this food security bill, government can remove anybody's hunger, right? If it was that easy to remove poverty and to remove hunger and to remove unemployment just by passing this kind of bills, then what the government was waiting for since, you know, last 65, 60, 70 years of independence. Right? First of all, it is shocking to know that even after 67, 68 years of independence, so many people are hungry into this country, right? And after that, it is absolutely ridiculous to know that these people are saying, telling all of us, right, that just by passing some kind of bill and just by giving this kind of subsidized food, they are going to remove poverty and they are going to remove hunger. By passing this kind of laws, nobody can remove hunger, right? What you can do is, you know, as they say, the society can afford to have as many paupers as, as it can, you know, afford to pay them. And this, you know, payment is not going to remain there forever because, you know, this food security bill itself is going to cost something like, you know, two lakh crore or something like that to the government. So. This subsidized food and many other subsidies which the government is giving, this, this welfare state cannot go on for on and on because as I said, one day they are going to run out of the resources and they have already run out of resources. They are you know, running large deficits now which the central bank RBI is right now monetizing and that is the reason why we are saying this higher prices of all goods and services and this scheme is just going to result into that higher prices of those goods and services so what will happen instead of having you know some wheat and rice and coarse food to eat with people are going to remain without it because the economy cannot take this kind of you know burden for a long period of time productive people the taxpayers cannot carry the weight of this heavy tax burden on their back so one day the economy is going to collapse totally, you know, it is already deteriorating the situation, you know, last, you know, June quarter, the growth rate was 4.4% only. But as I said, the problem here is not, you know, with this food security bill or, you know, something like that. The problem here is, is the failure of the central planning of the government, right? They, they are doing central planning micromanagement into the agricultural sector since the beginning of Indian independence. 
and then that is the reason why the price system is distorted that is the reason why the profit and loss system is distorted and that is the reason right we have this kind of you know mismatch between the demand and supply so on one side in government warehouses you know hundreds and thousands of tons of wheat is kind of rotting and on the other side people are dying because of hunger you know in states like Orissa for example people have to eat tree leaves you know and they die because of you know poison of then you know, all those tree leaves so we see this kind of you know anomaly or, or mismatch between demand on the one side and supply on the other side because government has central planning into the agricultural sector they provide all kind of subsidized power and subsidized water and you know they provide minimum support price to these farmers so because the profit and loss system and the price system is not working in the agricultural sector so farmers get wrong signals and they produce wheat right and on the other side there is not enough demand for wheat right and because government is in charge of allocating those resources this wheat so they are not doing their job properly they cannot do because as i said they don't have the information which is coming via the price system the price system is absent so that's why they cannot allocate the resources where they're actually needed and that is the reason why as i said you know thousands and hundreds of ton of you know wheat is rolling into the warehouses government warehouses and on the other side people are dying because of hunger so that is the problem right because of there is the absence of profit and loss system so farmers don't know which crop they have to cultivate and which crop they do not don't have to cultivate so they cultivate that kind of crop for which the government is giving highest minimum support price and not the kind of crop which the consumer the final consumers are actually demanding and that is the reason why as i said we are you know ending up with you know piles and piles of wheat into government warehouses and on the other side population is hungry so for example right now people need you know onions the prices of onions are going through the roof but the onion production is not available right we have to import onion from pakistan and china and even into that the government is meddling they are kind of you know offering tenders that from where they're going to import you know onions this kind of central planning will never work it has never worked in past it is never going to work in present it will never work in future if you see the human history whenever they have introduced price control and central planning it will fail so passing this kind of laws right this kind of food security bill is not going to provide any kind of security to people it's going to actually create a lot of insecurity for us in future because the fiscal burden is rising right the deficit deficit is rising and the and the central bank is pressurized is under pressure to monetize this for you know fiscal deficit is under pressure to print money to fund all these government profligacies and just to win their elections right and this is not a case of congress or any other party right all the parties are same you know if people think that if bjp is going to come into you know kind of you know power and they are going to change the situation dramatically then they obviously are dreaming right bjp is the same party which was in power something like 10 years ago and this is the same population who threw that party out out of power 10 years back so how can we think that the same party which was you know which failed to deliver the goods 10 years back is going to come back after 10 year and is going to deliver some kind of miracles right people are banking on one guy narendra modi i am this i am going to discuss narendra modi and raguram rajan and other such guys you know later on in this you know video blog but as i said the moment they announced this you know food security bill what happened is the rupee tank then the stock market also collapsed so rupee which is already depreciating very rapidly right against the other currencies foreign currencies right it is you know now below 100 level against you know british pound it is trading at something like 65.7 or 24 against us dollar it is above 84 85 against euro so what is happening immediately after this food security bill was announced the stock market collapsed and the rupee reached its record low of 69 rupees against 1 us dollar but as i said you know the problem is not this you know a problem you cannot solve this problem of hunger by passing this kind of bills right and as i said the rupee is going to continue to tank and what will happen is this you know this stabilization is only temporary it depends on the 
U.S. Central Bank what they are going to announce on 18 September if they will say that they are going to taper if they are going to stop the you know flow of money printing what they call the quantitative easing then it is very much possible that rupee will further deteriorate right because uh, the foreign investor will try to get out of Indian market and they will try to get into the US dollar so it is possible but as I said, this kind of profligate expenditure spending cannot go on for a very long period of time. And that's the reason why we have stock market collapse and the rupee continue to de you know, deteriorate. And now on the other side, you know, instead of stopping this kind of profligate spending, the government is held bent on increasing its revenue. How they want to balance their, you know, how they want to fill their budget deficit and fiscal deficit, not by raining on their spending, but by increasing their you know, tax income, what is you know, what I call you know, you know, tax money. So uh, they are actually you know, right now thinking of imposing 35% income tax on the super wealthy people, right? Super rich. The government is expected to propose a higher levy for the super rich under the new direct tax law, including a 35% levy on those earning more than 10 crore and a heavier burden for people with wealth of more than 50 crore right so already we are you know I am hearing and I'm reading the news that the wealthy Indians are now you know taking out their money from Indian market and depositing it into Singaporean banks for example they're taking out their money from here right if you're going to increase the tax rate then obviously the revenues are going to fall so you're not government is not going to bridge the gap between expenditure and 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 income and revenue by just you know trying to increase the revenue and not doing anything with the expenditure in fact they're they're increasing their spending what they need to do is they they need to cut down on their spending but they are not going to do that because you know this is election year and the only way in which they're going to win votes is by buying the voters outright by announcing this kind of you know kind of you know um, you know, daydream kind of, you know, schemes like food security bill, for example. Not only that, the government, if, you know, the current account deficit is widening. So Indian government is very much serious about, you know, curbing the, they are already, they have already waged the war on the goal. So they have done so many things. In fact, you know, last week they also kind of sent, you know, inquiry letters to the well, the temples in South India, they, they want to know, the government officials want to know what amount of gold these temples are having and they're thinking that they are going to monetize this gold, you know, and uh, obviously, expectedly, thankfully, the temples say that they are not going to, you know, monetize that gold because that gold is their own property, right? It will be absolutely stupid for, you know, people to give their gold to this government because what they are going to do after that is they are going to take your gold away from you and then they are going to create more inflation, right? So they are going to give you that, you know, depreciating rupee notes in your hand and going to take away your real asset from you. So only foolish people will give their gold to the government. Don't ever try to do that because that is your only protection. But anyways, not only that, they have not only waged a, go, you know, a war on gold, now they are after oil and petrol also. So in fact, last thing, you know, last week, the petroleum minister Moili came out with this crazy idea that they were thinking of shutting down the petrol pumps in night, right? So as I'm saying that some kind of rationing is going to come, that is for sure, right? Uh, I'm just, you know, thinking that what will happen if the, the war starts in Syria, for example, because the American terrorist government is very much itching to go to war against Syria because they are looking for all kind of pretext. They already have one, you know, in the form of this phony false flag chemical attack, right, which they are blaming on the Assad government. But suppose there is some kind of war in the Middle East, India will be in, you know, horrible troubles because we import 85% of our oil from outside, right, and if that oil import is going to stop, then I think the Indian economy will completely, you know, buckle, it will completely collapse. But even right now they're trying to stop this you know use of petrol so as i said that that crazy scheme actually was you know denied but in any case they are not you know kind of you know content with that they are saying that india may announce steps to cut fuel use this month so probably this month the petroleum minister will come out with some kind of you know fuel saving measures 
right? So I don't know what measures they are going to be when they will announce them. I'll come and analyze them. But this is some kind of rationing now being introduced by the you know desperate Indian government. They want to stop the consumption of oil and gold, right? The easiest way to do that is to stop printing money and putting that you know money which they have. You know RBI and government has created out of thin air. Stop putting that money into people's hands and or, and immediately you're going to stop this demand, right? You are creating the demand by printing this money, right? Artificial, phony money, paper money, creating money out of thin air. That is actually not money, it's currency, right? But they're creating this, you know, demand from their own, you know, uh, loose monetary policy, and then they're blaming the consumers that they are responsible. No, consumers are not responsible. The government and the central bank is responsible for all this, you know, heavy demand for gold and oil into the market. So introducing rationing is again not going to work. But in any case, what they're going to do, as I said, there's some kind of rationing, and I, you know, pretty much, you know, fear that maybe they will impose some kind of quota system also. So for example, they will say that you know every individual can only buy, let's say, 10 liter petrol per every month. So these are some kind of you know emergency war measures, rationing, quota system. So the government is really desperate and panicking. But as I said, instead of doing the right thing, they're doing exactly the opposite of the wrong things, right? So this is not going to help out anybody. Ultimately, what's going to happen is the economy is on the you know decline and unless and until the RBI stops printing money immediately and unless and until government stop all this profligate spending, nothing is going to change, right? Uh, from RBI last week, they, uh, you know, they removed the, uh, you know, former RBI governor Subara because he was very adamant. He was not, you know, you know, uh, listening to the government. He was not, you know, buckling under the pressure of government and reducing the interest rate. So they replaced, you know, Subara with uh, Raghuram Rajan. Raghuram Rajan is Chicago University professor. And uh, everybody is hailing that this one guy is, you know, miracles, you know, kind of going to do some kind of miracle and going to save the economy, going to save the rupee, right? So on the monetary side, everybody is, you know, kind of banking on this one guy, Raghuram Rajan. And on, in the politics, you know, they are banking on one guy, Narendra Modi. These are all very dangerous times when the whole nation is thinking that only one guy can save them, that is very, very dangerous situation. These are all the signs of, you know, maybe possibly coming totalitarianism, right? One guy, Raghuram Rajan, no matter how smart he is, right, he will never be able to figure out what the market interest rate should be because that market interest rate is determined by the market forces of demand and supply. Millions of you know buyers and sellers who are trading currencies every day. They are the you know people who are deciding what should be the market exchange rate of rupee against dollar or against euro or against British pound. One guy sitting in Mumbai, sitting in RBI offices, he will never be able to figure that out, right? But in any case, when he's in charge of determining that market interest rate, obviously he's going to make mistakes, right? And when he will you know keep the market interest rate lower than its natural rate, what will happen? He's going to create boom and bust cycle. And that is what is going on. So Bara created all this artificial cheap money after the beginning of 2007 crisis. And because of that, right now the economy is tanking. We are in recession right now. The bubble has busted. And that's why all these problems are there. Economy came down from 9 to 4.4% because that boom, artificial, you know, the prior boom was all artificial, created by pumping money, creating money out of thin air. So Raghuram Rajan, one guy cannot solve this problem, right? He cannot determine what should be the market interest rate. He cannot determine what, what should be the value of rupee. As I say, that is the work, that is the job of the market, of free market. He cannot replace those, you know, millions of traders, buyers and sellers. That, all, that work can only be done by the free market. But right now, we don't have any free market. We have the hamper market, heavily regulated. And that's why we are seeing this boom and bust cycle. Politically also, the whole country is so fed up with the UPA government and so fed up with the indecision. And, and that's the reason why they, they think that we need some kind of strong leader or some kind of authoritarian dictatorial leader who can take decisions. But people don't understand that when authoritarian dictator leaders take over the country, 
things will be very, very dangerous, right? Totalitarian regimes are very, very dangerous. Dictatorship is very dangerous. Military rule is very dangerous, right? Right now, they're thinking that one guy is going to save them. That is the most dangerous thing. When, you know, the country is facing this kind of situation where people are thinking that only one guy can save them, I think there is a big problem with that, right? I don't think the future is going to be any better, right? Doesn't matter if Narendra Modi is going to win or not. One guy cannot fix the problem. Government cannot solve the economic problem because they cannot allocate resources where they are needed for that price system and profit and loss system is required. So as long as the you know, free market is not in presence, as long as government is meddling with the free market, our problems are never going to be solved. To think that this one guy in politics and one guy in, you know, in, in the money market is going to cure all our problems is a daydream. Okay, so as I say, the situation is not going to change as long as the status quo remains. Situation will only change for better if we are going to see drastic changes in our policies, right? When government will stop doing what they're doing, when the government will start to shrink, when the government will start to become smaller and smaller and ultimately stop existing, only then the situation will start to become a bit better. So as long as that is not happening, we don't have anything to, you know, kind of, you know, feel happy about, right? To, you know, kind of, you know, uh, celebrate about, right? So we will see that, right? As I said, you know, the things remain, this, you know, same. And, you know, as I said, continue to buy this gold and silver and continue to protect yourself. I will come back again, you know, in a couple of weeks' time when uh, the U.S. Central Bank is going to announce its, you know, our next monetary policy so we will see whether they taper or not and what RBI is going to do because Rajan has extended the Indian monetary policy announcement to 28 September he wants to see what the US Fed is doing and then he wants to react looking at that you know policy but in any case as I said he's a central banker and he has a money printing machine in his hand so he only knows one thing and one thing and that is print money and printing money is not going to solve our problems because all these problems have already resulted because of the same money printing process so that same money printing cannot solve our problems all right so i thank you guys you know take care of yourself out there and i'll come back again in a couple of weeks time thank you very much for watching me and good night